Born in Seattle, Washington, Maurice Smith took up karate after being inspired by a Bruce Lee movie. And also playing in a garage band. <laughs> when he was 18 years old, Maurice ventured into kickboxing, and he quickly defeated seven amateur opponents. He would turn pro in 1982, and his first pro fight would be against the World Kickboxing Council's light heavyweight champion at the time, Tony Morelli. Morelli would defeat Smith by decision after seven rounds. But Smith would have his revenge. He would return to fight Morelli 14 months later, this time knocking Morelli out in the seventh round via roundhouse kick to the head. Sweet. Smith was then the World Kickboxing Council's light heavyweight champion. Smith would continue to fight in kickboxing until a brief hiatus beginning in 1993 having amassed a record of 30 wins and 4 losses up until that time. What caused his hiatus? It was due to a venture into Pancrase. This is what requires a bit of backstory. In the late 1980s, the UWF, that's Universal Wrestling Federation of Japan, would hold a series of partially real hybrid fighting events that would showcase unique stylistic matchup bouts, such as Kickboxer with gloves versus a bare-handed karate fighter. Or a grappler versus a boxer. On November 29th, 1998, UVF would hold the U Cosmos event, where Maurice Smith would be matched up against Minoru Suzuki, who's the future co-founder of Pancrase at the time. In that bout, Smith was equipped with boxing gloves, while Suzuki was fighting as a pro wrestler. This fight which may or may not have been a work, would see Suzuki attempt to suplex Smith over the top rope. In the end, Smith would knock Suzuki out in the fourth round with a curiously soft straight right hand. Regardless of its authenticity, this event is one of the coolest spectacles in the history of MMA, and it's totally worth a watch. If you're out there, uh, I have a copy of it, so if you want to check yeah, it out, I will actually I'll give you a copy. But if you're listening to this, look for the U Cosmos event. Uh, it is really cool. Uh, I'll include some clips here. The way you said, like, he's equipped with boxing gloves. You could say that the other guy, they give him a grass skirt. <laughs> or, like, he's got a wooden leg. <laughs> like, he, had, he had boxing gloves on. They gave the other guy a fucking colonial tricorder. <laughs> You know, maybe one day we can actually watch that one as like and do a side episode. Sure. Not like a part of the main episodes, but as a side episode. You know? Bonus features. Yeah, exactly. And if you read between the lines of what I'm kind of detailing here, you could claim that this UWF event was the inspiration for Suzuki to help in the creation of Pancrase. But I could just be making that shit up. In 1993, Smith would be lured to join Pancrase and his old pal Suzuki would be waiting for him in his inaugural bout, which would happen at Pancrase. Yes, we are hybrid. Number three, actual name of the event. This time, the bout would be a traditional kickboxing bout with gloves on both men and no grappling, although Suzuki wore the trademark Pancrase leggings. No matter, as Smith would knock Suzuki out again, this time in the third round. His next fight under Pancrase, Smith would fight under the regular Pancrase rules of striking and grappling. This was at Pancrase, Road to the Championship, number one, held on May 31st, 1994. Once again, his opponent was Suzuki. The result? Suzuki would armbar Smith in the third round. Smith would stick around Pancrase throughout the mid-90s, losing to Ken Shamrock once and twice to Boss Rutan. He then had two fights in rings of Japan, where he lost both times, once to Shuyoshi Kosaka, TK, Hi, TK, future pride fighter, and also to Kiyoshi Tamura, another future pride fighter. Smith then returned to America, appearing at Extreme Fighting No. 3 on October 8, 1996. He would head kick TKO Marcus Silvera in the third round. Next, at Extreme Fighting number 4 on March 28, 1997, in Des Moines, Iowa, dipshit Kazunari Mirakami, remember him from Pride 1? He would get knocked out by Smith in the first round. And special thanks to YouTuber Super Merryman for this awesomely shit video. Then came UFC. At UFC 14, held on July 27, 1997, 
Smith would go 21 minutes against Mark Coleman, winning via decision and taking Coleman's heavyweight belt. I watched that fight, too. Yeah, I hear a grueling fight. Yeah, it was. Tank Abbott was next at UFC 15 on October 17th of that same year, where Tank Abbott would simply give up because of his fatness. I mean exhaustion. <laughs> his exhaustion, not fatness. <laughs> it took only eight minutes for that to happen, by the way. Then UFC went to Japan, and Smith would defend his belt against Randy Couture on December 21st. After 21 minutes, the natural would be declared the winner by a decision. Naturally. Naturally. At UFC 19 on March 5th of 1999, Smith would lose by a decision to Kevin Randleman. And then at UFC 21 on July 16th of 99, Smith would defeat Marco Huas after Huas's corner called for the fight to stop in between round one and two. Rest in peace, Kevin Randleman, by the way. Rest in peace, Kevin Randleman, yes. And that brings us here to Pride number seven. 